generating functions offer a powerful technique for solving a whole bunch of different problems, and they come up in many fields. Um, the kind of generating functions that we're going to look at are called ordinary generating functions, and they are very closely related to the electrical engineer Z transforms. There are also um, Dirichlet uh, generating functions and exponential generating functions, but ordinary generating functions will be enough for us to illustrate this big idea and give you a couple of applications of them. So let's just look at an explicit example. Um, generating functions are really about infinite series. So let's let s of x be this familiar geometric infinite series, 1 plus x plus x squared x to the n all the way out. And um, what I'm going to do is to use a sort of generating function ideas, which are correspond to infinite series ideas, to derive a closed formula for s of x. Now we've already done this using the perturbation method. Uh, and in effect, this first example, um, which is illustrating some ideas about generating functions, is really just a, a reprise in simpler form, actually of that perturbation argument. So the first observation is that if s of x is this infinite series, then what happens if I multiply s of x by x? Well, it has the effect of right shifting the whole sequence. It changes the 1 into an x, the x into an x squared, and it raises the degree by 1 of every term in the series. So I get this series, x, x, x squared, which I've now lined up with the terms in s of x. Now there's an obvious thing to do. I just subtract them, and if I subtract s x s of x from s of x, everything cancels except the 1. And that means now I have a solution for, uh, I can easily solve for s of x, and s of x is 1 over 1 minus x. Um, so this is a uh, crucial formula, which is uh, sort of at the center of, of generating function use. And we've seen it already. The um, uh, the infinite series 1 plus the infinite geometric series 1 plus x plus x squared uh, and x is all the way out is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Now of course as a formula in calculus this series only converges when the norm of x is less than 1 um, and uh, uh, of course this uh, right hand formula um, uh, so the actual series, if you sum it up, may not equal the right-hand formula. On the other hand, if we think of this as just a purely algebraic formal manipulative fact, which is all we've used here, we never use anything or other about convergence, then um, we can regard this equality as really a, an algebraic identity and not worry about convergence. And you rarely do have to worry about convergence when you're working with uh, generating functions. So we're not going to put in provisos about when this equality holds uh, or because the left-hand side converges or doesn't. We're just not going to worry about it. We don't have to. And, and the formal basis for that is explained in the notes in an optional section. But I think uh, you should be willing to just accept the reassurance that we're not going to be, we don't have to be concerned with it. It's safe to ignore it. So the general idea of generating functions is that really uh, what we're interested in is in taking infinite sequences of, of numbers g0, g1, gn, and so on, an infinite sequence of, uh, of numbers. These may be integers, they may be real numbers, they may even be complex numbers. And I'm going to try to capture the properties of the whole infinite sequence by turning them into a single object, which I think of as the power series where the nth element in my sequence is the coefficient of x to the n in the power series. Now, in a certain sense, well, the generating function g of x really is this infinite sequence, and we write the x's down just to remind us about uh, 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 the way we're going to regard the sequence and manipulations we're going to do on it. But let's uh, not worry about that too much and just say that, that g of x is a generating function that corresponds to this infinite sequence. Every generating function corresponds to the sequence of its coefficients. And we'll be interested in talking about how operations on this sequence of coefficients, shifting them and doubling them and so on, correspond to doing operations on the corresponding generating function of x. So if I look at the infinite a geometric series, what we just figured out is that the sequence of all ones corresponds to the geometric series 1 plus x plus x squared by definition. And we have a formula for that, that 1 over 1 minus x is a nice concise way of describing this infinite sequence of all ones. Okay, um, some useful notation uh, that uh, uh, we'll, uh, that we'll set up now, which is that when I write in square brackets x to the n 
uh, just before a, the name of a generating function. What I really mean is the coefficient of x to the n in the expansion of this generating function. So uh, this is read as the coefficient of x to the n in the series for g of x, which is g, g sub n by definition, if we think of g of x as being shorthand for that sequence g0 plus g1x up through gn x to the n and keep going. Okay, so for example, if I now say what's the coefficient of x to the n in 1 over 1 minus x, where I'm saying that this is a description of a generating function and the coefficient when I expand it as an infinite series of this term is in fact 1. Okay, um, now that I have this identity, I can take derivatives in a formal way because I know how to differentiate 1 over 1 minus x, and I can differentiate the infinite series term by term. Again, we're not worrying about convergence, and we're just going to be very comfortable in doing a term by term differentiation. So if you take the derivatives of the term on the left, well, the derivative of, z of 1 is 0, the derivative of x is 1, derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of x to the n is n, x to the n minus 1, and the derivative of the right-hand side, well, that's not too hard to do in your head. This, remember, is 1 minus x to the minus 1, so its derivative is uh, minus 1 uh, times 1 minus x to the minus 2 times the derivative of minus x which cancels the minus, and I wind up with its being equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared. So that's a useful little identity. Um, and what we're saying is that the sequence of positive integers, 1, 2, 3, and so on, which corresponds to, in fact, this uh, uh, infinite geometric series, uh, has a concise algebraic description as 1 over 1 minus x squared. So we could say that 1 over 1 minus x squared is the generating function for the positive integers. If I take, I'm thinking of the positive integers as laid out in a list in increasing order, and if I want the generating function for this list, it's simply 1 over 1 minus x squared. Uh, well, uh, so as I say, that's for the positive integer z plus. Um, and again, ap applying the, this co coefficient notation, what is the coefficient of x to the n in the geometric, uh, in the series for the generating function 1 over 1 minus x squared? Well, it's n plus 1. Remember, uh, looking back at that series, uh, the coefficient of x to the n minus 1 was n. The coefficient of x to the n was n plus 1, which is what we're concluding here. And that's another fact to remember. We're going to make use of that um, in the next video, so hang on to it. The coefficient of x to the n in 1 over 1 minus x squared is n plus 1, or another way to remember it is that 1 over 1 minus x squared is the generating function for the positive integers. Okay. Um, now, the trick that we use to get a closed formula for uh, for s of x, the geometric series, where we right-shifted by multiplying by x, is a general technique that when you take g of x and you look at the series that it corresponds to, if you, if you look at the generating function x g of x, that corresponds to taking the g of x series and shifting it right one, filling in a leading zero. So if I do that, it follows that if I, uh, that now the coefficient of x to the n minus 1 in g of x becomes, by virtue of the right shift, the coefficient of x to the n in x g of x. So this is one way to express what's going on in terms of the uh, coefficient notation. But more important is that x times 1 over x squared now corresponds to the series 0 plus x plus 2x squared up through n x to the n. So now I've got a nice connection that it's it's simpler than n than the previous one where it's n plus 1x to the n. And what we can say is that this formula on the left, x over 1 minus x squared, corresponds to the sequence of non-negative integers. So this formula is the a description of the generating function for the non-negative integers.